Welcome to Spotlight on Nonprofits, the show that talks about nonprofits in our community and their impact. I'm Peter Crowley, your host, but we'd like to take a moment and thank our sponsor, NJM Insurance, for underwriting and bringing this show to you today. Today, we are pleased to have as our guest, Ms. Mary Incrot. Mary is the Executive Director of the Mount Carmel Guild of Trenton. Mary, welcome. Thank you for having me. So whenever we start these shows, it's always good to find a little bit about you Okay. and the Mount Carmel Guild. So can you give us a little background on both? Um, um, me should be easy, right? Uh, <laughs> I'm originally from Ohio, Columbus. Um, I relocated here with my husband and my two kids to Princeton, New Jersey about 18 years ago. And I started, um, you know, raising my kids, and then I was looking for some other opportunities, and I come from a background in applied history, and there was a little advertisement in my local church bulletin that said they needed a grant writer at Mount Carmel Guild as a volunteer, and it's like, that sounds like a great way to start getting back into the field again, especially since we relocated from another state, and right. it, it just like, I, I don't know, that was like over 15 years ago. So I started out as a volunteer, then as a business manager, um, as a caseworker, uh, assistant director, and then executive yeah, director. director. Yeah. A little bit about, about the Mount Carmel Guild. What, what does it do and what's its focus? Mount, Mount Carmel Guild is a 103 year old um, grassroots nonprofit based in, in Trenton. Um, our mission is to help the low income, and we do that through two programs, community support. We're mainly known for our food pantry, but we also have prevention assistance for people who have difficulty um, with uh, eviction notices or shutoff notices with utilities. And we also have this wonderful home health nursing program that helps um, individuals age 60 and older living in Mercer County to age safely in their homes. Yeah, and I think we'll sort of focus on both those two parts during the interview, but mm -hmm. let's focus first on the community support program. Sure. So talk briefly about, you know, the focus of the program and how it's helping the community. Uh, well, we're mainly known for the food pantry, and there is a great deal of poverty in Trenton, and food insecurity is definitely one area where we can really help people at. Our, our care receivers often are juggling bills, juggling their utility bills, their rent bills, and this is one way, food is the way we, we can help them make their balance, balance their budgets, I guess. It's, it's never easy, you know, it's, it's a strategy um, that they use to have enough money to survive. Do people have to reach out to the Mount Carmel Community Guild mm -hmm. um, for assistance or do you help them by going out and finding people who can use your services? Um, we've been there a hundred plus years, so people can seem to know you. where our food okay. pantry is and, and, and they come. Um, it's changed a lot since COVID. We used to ask people to only come once a month. Now they can come once a week. A lot of people were right in Trenton, walk to our location, and many are just people we have been helping for a long time. So we can talk about COVID a little bit later. Mm -hmm. oh. um, there are several food pantry programs that I remember in Trenton. Oh, yes. How is yours making a difference? Well, ours is one of the largest. In fact, until recently, we were like the only one that was open five days a week. So we're, really? we're, we're a big one. We're, okay. we're a big one. A lot of them are, might be a smaller one that are only open like a third Sunday or a month of the month or just on an evening or something like that. So we're big. We like to say we're the best. Um, we really work hard to have a variety of food to offer um, our care receivers. So yes, we're part of the food bank system, which almost all the local food pantries are, and we get similar food. Yeah, I noticed yeah. on your website that you actually have a food finder program where you will help individuals who may not live close find food or locations where they can go. Sure, what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. we definitely encourage it, people it, it, to on, read on, online. It said the food finder program it will tell you different locations. Oh, well, right. Um, so we're part of the okay, now I'm starting to talk about another section. Um, actually, your name or the trend health team as right. a food finder, they, they are the ones that organize the oh, uh, so you go through list. Them yes, yes, right. and they have really worked hard to connect people to food, um, meal sites, you know, as well as just the food pantries. And so I was like interested in looking at your mission statement. I'm just going to read it for a second. Oh, sure. Through relationships and collaborations forged with dignity and hope, the Guild assists the community to overcome challenges to decent health, nutrition, housing and education. Mm -hmm. What jumped at me there was the educational side. Because I always think education is the core of anybody moving beyond and ahead. Can you talk a little bit about education and how you work with the guild and individuals in the community? 
education is something that is important to us and that we want to grow into doing more and more of. Um, when we talk about our nursing program, it's really one-on-one -on -one with the patient and the nurse talking about nutrition, how things affect um, how their medication works and things like that. Um, for our food pantry, it could be something as simple as having a um, health information day through SNAP-Ed or offering um, a once a month nutrition message, which we do. Um, we recently, I think last month we did asparagus. Asparagus is, has a lot of fiber in it. And it's really good for pre probiotic gut health, health gut health for you. Mm -hmm. um, has a lot of fiber, I think I already said. Good for lowering cholesterol and also apparently helps with hangovers. Hangovers yeah. too, there you go. <laughs> yeah, add advantage there of asparagus. I know, I know asparagus a lot. <laughs> so you know it might be one. just a small health information, you know, just something to increase awareness about healthy eating. We're all very conscious about healthy eating, but sometimes we're not always uh, <laughs> ready to hear the message. So I learn things too. Well, I know there's been a movement to more healthy eating in mm -hmm. the Trenton area. There's been some local course. farms that are putting mm -hmm. work together. Have you worked with them also to bring that local food to the pantry so you mm -hmm. can get it to your uh, constituents? I, Absolutely. Um, the um, farmers that get hunger, great. Um, a lot of times it works through the food bank system. So, you know, we are a partner with uh, Mercer Street Friends. Um, but definitely during the, uh, the season, we get right. weekly offerings. Uh, whatever doesn't sell at the farmer's market comes over to us as well. Right. Um, I know the Department of Agriculture has been wonderful to us. They have a lot of home farm people who donated stuff and people bring um, food from their own home gardens too that are... Um, very much welcome. Whenever we do a survey about what kind of food you would like to see uh, more of in the food pantry, it's two it's things. Fresh. It's produce, yes, fresh fruits and vegetables, which is why we try and um, do the healthy nutrition message every month about a fresh fruit or vegetable, since we know that's very, very um, interested, you know, of interest to our, our care receivers and also um, protein products, you know, like meat. Well, it's, it's, it's <laughs> of course. So important, especially with younger children yeah. and getting to some degree yeah. of balancing fast food diet with a good fresh produce mm -hmm. diet. It is. It's challenging. Well, we, we have some naughty food, too. <laughs> We're blessed that some of the local bakeries do give us, um, they give us bread and they also give us some cakes and other treats. But well, everything great. in moderation, right? You know, that's true. just to go cold that, turkey that on true. sugar is really hard. So, so I know trend in many larger cities. You know, has increased homelessness, especially after COVID, uh, and has experienced some um, lack of residential housing and other mm -hmm. things. How do you look to work with other organizations? I mean, I know you're not all by yourself and not working, but right. how do you work with the other organizations in the region to look to improve family experiences in the Trenton community? Okay, that's the question I didn't. <laughs> I felt a little more challenging. We're always so busy with doing what we are doing, you know, that it's sometimes hard to branch out a little more, but we certainly are connected and partner um, with all the other local trend new prop trying to nonprofits. I mean, I know the executive directors and we communicate back and forth. You know, if I have an emergency that I think my good neighbor at the rescue mission could help, they've been there and we've helped their care receivers too whenever we can. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because I know in the nonprofit world, uh, there's always this challenge to work with your peers because of funding and all the other things you want to yeah, sort of hold alone. Yeah. <laughs> but, but honestly, I think it's important because you all bring certain values in your organizations to a community like Trenton or other communities in the area. And I'm glad to see that you are looking out to work with them and that you all get together. Yeah, oh, we do. Oh, yeah, if you ask any of the Trenton, I'm, well, I'll tell you <laughs> that we do have this network that we can reach out to each other on a, on a personal level. Which is great because I think you find that you know, one organization may be better on the homeless side, one can be on the food pantry side, one the nursing side. And that brings that whole conglomerate of groups right. together right. to help a community. Right. And, and oh, I'm going to mention this, and we should check it, but we are part of the Trend and Social Impact Group. You know, okay. we did have a communal website, but I think it's had some issues lately, so I don't really know if that's true or not. But I mean, certainly we work with places like the Trend and Health Team and are part of the Trend and St and they've done a great Stakeholders. Job. They've done a great job. Oh, the Trend and Health Team has, has been a real blessing, I think, to our community, trying to bring us all together. And, so the, this question is still a relevant one in conversations mm -hmm. like this. COVID-19, even though we are seen to be coming out of the pandemic, all the signs point to that. Mm -hmm. How has that impacted what the uh, Mount Carmel Gill Community Support Program did okay. and what you've done going forward? 
Well, COVID-19, you know, was a struggle for us, but our food pantry never closed and our demand really? increased. Really? That's you know, great. I think one day because of staff, you know, no, we kept open. That was really important. We wanted to know that the community could count on us. I mean, that's why we were there. You know, we never thought we would be frontline workers like lots of people, you know. Right. Nope, we were always, our operations changed. We were more outdoors and we still continue to have some of our food outdoors. But um, what was a positive for us, you know, because, you know, your doors close, as we say, we never have like a lot of money. I'm like, oh no, and I'm like doing the math here. And, you know, people came forward. There was a real awareness about how important food security is for all the, for Mercer Street Friends, for all those food banks. And that, that made a huge, huge difference in terms of, you know, I'll be, be able to do the work, but in motivation for us to continue to do it, to know that so many people cared about feeding the hungry and making sure people had food. So many food drives, neighborhood food drives, it was just, it was just very um, supportive, you know. Now things are a little different, you know. We are moving back to normal, you mm -hmm. know, and maybe food security isn't the top issue, um, but it's still a challenge. It's you know, our people still are struggling. They haven't got super better jobs. A lot of our people are retired or have a mental or other challenge that makes working difficult, you know. So there's lots of stuff on the news right now about the farm bill and um, yeah. yeah uh, authorizing it for another five years. So we want to cut SNAP, you know, we want to cut this. Um, I'm big on international um, humanitarian aid too, so I don't want that to be cut as well, you know. People should be able to eat, you know, you have to be fed and to be able to learn, you know, whether you're a kid in school or an adult looking to build new career skills. Well, there's studies that show that the uh, learning process is enhanced by having food. I mean, to come to come to school by having a breakfast or having a lunch, mm -hmm. as opposed to not, it really impacts young children right. and young adults and how they learn. So I think you're absolutely. It makes right me that. hangry sometimes too, and I know I'm not as productive as I should be because I was like, oh, I'm kind of hungry. When's lunch coming? But you had an interesting point, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and I hadn't thought of that. So in your in your experience, COVID brought the community together in a oh. way that hadn't happened before. Certainly the community has always supported us, but it right. refocused them on something very, very specific, food security for people. And so many people, you know, we were all like going to the grocery store just to buy a couple extra things for the, for the food pantry. Mm -hmm. You know, they were doing it. And yeah, it, 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 I can't, just how it meant the world to us. I'd send a little email out, you know, to our supporters, you know, okay, well, this is what's happening. And we'd get like all these online donations. I didn't even ask for it. I mean, I sort of asked, but I, but I wasn't, that was really, you know, I just want to tell you what's going on, you know, and people had more time to think about others, I think, um, when we were well, kind of trapped can, at home. I hope that continues. I that. hope so, Probably I hope so, down. because, you know, um, all nonprofits that really help the low income, you know, we, we want to pay attention to that and, and really help our care receivers. They are, so, they are wonderful people. Oh, I, I agree. Yeah, they and, are absolutely and, wonderful. I'm a strong, I mean, strong advocate you know, for the but, impact mm -hmm. nonprofits have in the community yeah. really are. They, they, so I know the, the, the Mount Carmel Guild is a Catholic-based organization. It is. Mm -hmm. uh, I assume and that you serve other religious uh, groups oh, also? of course. You know, we don't discriminate. We don't even ask about anything really. So yeah, to come to our food pantry, um, you just, we ask your name, you know, we like to know where you live, but it's not gonna be a barrier. Oh, well, that's great. Mm -hmm. And um, with that, I think we're gonna take a short break okay. here. Uh, once again, I wanna thank uh, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance for sponsoring the program. We'll be right back with Mary Incott, the CEO and Executive Director of the Mount Carmel Guild. And we'll explore the other main Mount Carmel Guild program, which is home health nursing. Welcome back. Our guest today is Ms. Mary Inkrot, the Executive Director of the Mount Carmel Guild of Trenton. Mary, um, I was excited to hear about the launch of your new promotional assets for your home health nursing program. We haven't spoken about yet that mm -hmm. yet. Um, but can you tell you, the audience more about the home health nursing program, a little about the new initiative, and how you will bring awareness of this program to the community? 
Absolutely. So our home health nursing program is designed to help the elderly, age 60 and older, um, to age in place in their own okay, homes. Elder, age 60 and older, right? So, and Mercer County residents in particular for okay, us. Okay, but not just Trenton residents or? No, but anywhere in Mercer County. Anywhere we, in Mercer County. We serve people okay. in all, from all the communities. Okay. Yes, so, um, because that's what um, older people want to do. I mean, when you serve that, survey someone who isn't quite that old, yes, I want to age in place as long as possible. So our goal is to help them age safely in place. Um, we are an accredited um, home health nursing firm mm -hmm. under private duty standards. So that's something that's happened in the last three or four years. Um, we have registered nurses. Typically, they visit a patient once every two weeks and perform services like vital signs. You would expect that, but also medication management, um, helping in with injections, um, helping to make sure the house continues to be safe. I mean, little simple things are challenging for um, older folks, like the uh, battery and the smoke detector. You know, changing that, I don't like to do it, you know. So they make sure they, they, they stay safe that way. But uh, another side of the program is care coordination. And what the patients don't see is how the nurse is helping them behind the scenes by coordinating right. things with their doctor's offices, their pharmacies, um, their other caseworkers, even with their family, you know, and that, that takes a lot. Our nurses are completely on their side doing everything they can to help them to remain safe and age at home. So that's a pretty big initi initiative. Mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned, you've been here over 100 years. People know the Mount Carmel Guild. Mm -hmm. How do you get the message out that you're changing and bringing a new program? That's always okay. a challenge. Well, yes, we've been known as a hidden gem for, I don't know, 100 years, you yeah. know, and we're a little tired of it. Um, so we were fortunate to get some grant funding to help us market the program. So our program isn't really changing. It's just we're really working hard to increase awareness about it. Okay. Um, when you're older, you're sometimes... Um, skeptical about letting a stranger in your home and that is hopefully we want to get more recognition of our name and have people come to our website and, and see videos of our actual patients telling how much um, our nurses have helped them so just to, so to part overcome of it that be barrier. A testimonial? Yeah. Well, there are testimonies right now on our th uh, on our video. Yeah, we want okay. we want people to come to their website to learn more, as well as learning about the particulars of what the program is—the 60 years and older living in Mercer County. You know, but really hear from our patients about how it makes a difference, so this resistance is overcome. We're we're part of their team. You know, mm -hmm. we work with your family, your pharmacy, your doctors, everybody. You know, to help you get what you want, which is to age safely at your own house. How is technology? helped you drive this kind of a program? All right, so technology um, is something Let, let me just sort of jump in. So, <laughs> as an example, I know when my dad uh, was home and he was ill, he would have a machine that would say, you know, good morning, Bob, let's check your blood pressure. He would take his blood pressure, oh, Bob, your blood pressure is good. And there was a connection with the hospital and himself. Is that something that's beyond where you're doing it now? Yeah. Or is, are you yeah, leading that, into that? I, I hope that will be the future. Okay. You know, that'll be more, um, all our, very few of the patients we serve, remember they're low income as right, well, right. low income, um, have internet capability. That certainly was shown to be true during COVID. And, um, you know, there are people um, like Mercer County Office on Aging that have piloted a program to provide them with um, those little pad things. Mm -hmm. Show you what you <laughs> yeah, mean, right. yeah. But even that can be really challenging for them, you know, because they just don't come from a, a background using technology. I think the younger generation of older individuals definitely are gonna are, are gonna be starting to use it. So it's interesting to see um, how it's gonna change over these years. Because I think, I think COVID showed, we really need to stay connected with the internet. Um, for us, um, remember some of our patients are, are, are quite older, you know, mm -hmm. in their 80s and stuff, um, and have maybe some um, cognitive challenges. Um, and one of them that just came to us was that they have a glue close monitoring system, right. but they're not able to change the battery. So what's the point, you know, yeah, of doing it? it? It's something so simple that you and I wouldn't think twice about, but it can be a real challenge. And a nurse, they're not like they're every day, they're every two weeks, you know, are checking to make sure that's working for them, you know, just being a pair of eyes that have their care on their priority list, you know, and making sure everything's there to help them as much as possible. Well, it's interesting you say that because the more you think about it, you're right, technology is great if you use it. 
But installing a battery, which is a simple thing for a lot of folks, is difficult if it you're is. in your in your early later ages and your fingers may not work as well. You may not right. know where to find the best. That's a great right, idea. Right, that the, yeah, the home. right. That that just started. You know that we, we the nurse was in the home, saw that this was a challenge, and was like, "This is a challenge I can help with. I'm going to start making sure I'm helping them make sure their battery's working." So you, you mentioned uh, as a qualification, sixty and above. Yes. Um, what what. Um, what services can can be provided in home? I mean, they, I know you, you touched on a couple of them. Right, so we're not um, acute care nursing or skilled nursing like you had um, your shoulder replaced or something and you needed someone to come <laughs> in the house every day for a week. No, we're more of, of maintenance and long-term management things with these twi once every two week visits. You know, if you're on like a blood thinner medication, we can help you with the anticoagulant INR right. testing. That's more frequent, you know. Um, stories I'd like to tell with someone who had had like a mild stroke, um, he, um, wasn't aware that a swelling was starting to occur in his leg and his, his nurse came and, and noticed it you know and then on our next visit it was severe you know so she reaches out to the doctors the patient themselves was not really cognizant of this change occurring to them the sign that there's a problem here and it was discovered you know he wasn't taking his um, um this from water, you know, medication, right? right? Yeah. As he should have. But our nurse discovered that, you know, um, got him to start taking that medication, you know, avoided a trip to the hospital, and then is still following up because she goes every two weeks. Um, but the next time she still found some more swelling in his legs, she can immediately call the doctor's office and then get that medication adjusted while they work it out well, so it's what's best for the patient. Yeah. That's great. It, yeah, it, it doesn't, you know, that that's, what the nursing is, you know. It sounds so like a great program. It, it is. It really is great. It really can help um, people, you know, and and help um, families who maybe not are in the home or live in another state who can't come as often, you know, right. and, and make know that someone, a professional pair of eyes, is right there in the house, you know, checking on them. And the cost of this program to the individual is what? It's nothing. It's free. It is free, and I, I so like to address service. that. Yeah, and we have funding from Mercer County Office on Aging. Um, we have funding from private foundations. We have our own Aging in Place appeal that we have every summer, and receive re support from like the Renton, Trenton, the Rotary Club of Trenton is a real great matching sponsor for our Aging in Place appeal. So I definitely wanted to give a shout out to them because I really appreciate that. Um, so it truly is at no cost. We don't bill your insurance or your uh, Medicare gap insurance or anything like that. And that's another thing that's come to my attention that people think um, we're trying to trick them or something like that. No, we're not. That's, yeah. that's wonderful. It really is. Yeah, it really is. And I, I don't want that to be a barrier. So th thank you for letting me Well, you led to my next that. question, oh. funding. <laughs> funding is always, always a challenge. Oh, it nonprofits. is. It is. We, we, we have a mission members program, which is, I mean, like I said, the guild, it's a guild. So that's a collection of people who share a common interest, which is helping the low income of our community. Right. And they are our mission members. So we have hundreds of them who routinely support us. Um, we're very grateful to the Diocese of Trenton. They're like our number one supporter so thank you to the bishop um, various foundations I mentioned Mercer County we've been blessed with funding from New Jersey Office of Faith-Based Initiatives and have aging in place appeal and other appeals and annual gala every October that kind of thing always looking for a um, new grant opportunity you know that mm -hmm. is a good match so we can be better partners so yeah well i would assume your grant writing background helped there too oh yeah <laughs> right it is it is it's quite a skill uh, yeah it, it, it's it, an amazing yeah, skill yeah. i'll tell you i've talked to a number of nonprofits mm -hmm. and those that are able to find a qualified, well-known, a well, well-experienced grant writer—that's mm -hmm. manna from heaven. I, I mean, it really is. Oh yeah, Grant has his own special writing skill, and I think as executive director, I'm involved, of course, with the guild and its care receivers on a day-to-day -day basis, and so I can really um, share, I think, like the personal stories more, you know, the, the connections we have with people. Um, sometimes you see, oh, the nurses have, I don't know, 20 patients or something like that, you know, what are, and, but for all we do for those 20 patients to help them, you know, is, is amazing. Your life's changing. Yeah, for them, yeah, and appreciated by their families, and, and it helps the community too, because our goal is not to have to go to a nursing home prematurely, right. or have extra trips to the hospital, you know? 
to help well, as you mentioned safe. earlier, mm-hmm. aging in place is so important it is. to individuals as they get older, and that, that, that house is security for them. Oh, absolutely. It's familiar to them. It's where they have their memories, you know, they have their connections to maybe their neighbors still. And I think COVID and yeah. how scary it was for, you know, these large group settings made people even more aware that, oh, home is great. Of course, it's good to get out and socialize, too. I won't, <laughs> I won't say that. Uh, most of our patients are homebound or right. have some type of mobility issue that's why we go to them so I always ask this question because it's um, uh, I find it important so you from personal experience I know how tough a nonprofit running is I run them mm-hmm. but what have you mm-hmm. found to be your biggest challenge as leader of the Mount Carmel Guild you've been there about five years as executive director yeah right. much longer in, in terms so of so involved. I guess if you could give me your biggest challenge <laughs> and your biggest success I always like to hear those uh, two. Um, the biggest challenge is always you know wanting to be responsive to our care receiver and doing more while continuing to do what we really already doing you know and having the funding and the staffing that we need to make it happen right. so the biggest success that I've experienced um, I think is with um, our board, to be honest. I mean, every nonprofit has a board, but we've really worked to um, recruit to our board and have active committees because we're a very small organization with like five full-time and five part-time people. And we really um, depend on our volunteer board to help us grow in the directions that we want to grow. So I've really been happy about that. Yeah, I I will (laughs) tell you, I've always seen one of the most successful, or the more successful nonprofits have a very engaged board. It's, it's so important both for your mm-hmm. support and what you do, and as you said, you're not deep in staff, mm-hmm. and everybody no. works pretty pretty hard at what right. they do. It is, it's very important. So if any listener wants to know more about Montgomery Guild, bring a special skill to us on our board, we'd love it. So <laughs> what, what is the long-term vision? Now, so you're there five years, you've been there almost 15 altogether. Uh, What's your long-term vision for the Mount Carmel Guild and the community of Trenton? Uh, obviously for the home health nursing program, uh, you know, that our phones are ringing off the hook with seniors who want to be part of the program. And That's that we great. have a huge staff. Um, for the food pantry is that it's gone out of business because everyone has food security, you know, ultimately. Right. But to be more, uh, you know, to be responsive to what our community tells us they need. And, and that, that would be our goal. So you envision the continuation of this, the home nursing and expansion of that program? Uh, that's the whole point of this whole marketing is to increase awareness and have more participants and then of course increase uh, the funding that people want to help us keep it going with. Well, I, I, we're getting to the end, but mm-hmm. I, I always have one question I ask all nonprofit okay. leaders, I told you earlier, oh. and that is, you know, what makes you want to work as a leader of a nonprofit? As I joke around, I've done this, yeah. but you, you, you are often overworked, you're undercompensated, and you pretty much do everything. What, no, what is it that drives you every morning? you've told all those negatives, and <laughs> you've got out. It's about the people. Obviously, it's a great reward to work with the poor and, and, and all our care receivers, you know, and, and a simple thank you. But, it, but it's not just those people, too. I, I mentioned, you know, the support right. of the board, right. of the support of our volunteers, when I talked about COVID, just those people who I didn't really know that just had a random food drive in their neighborhood, you know, that they care about our mission just as much as we do. And my staff, uh, please don't let me forget them. You know, they yeah. are very much just like me <laughs> and they're, they're mission driven. So it's the giving back. So um, on the screen will be the address mm-hmm. and the internet uh, website. Okay. But let her know as you how they can support both in volunteers and in funding. How can they support, How can they do it? Oh, well, the uh, hey, Guild. if you're interested in watching this, give tell, us a so you call. Tell them directly. Uh, just call us or send us an email. We have a website, lots of information about volunteering on there. There's even uh, an online app if you want to um, start registering to come and help in the food pantry. Um, we're open there Monday through Friday, 9.30 to 11.30, always looking for help, and also on Wednesday afternoons. Um, our Most of our board members start off on committees like facilities or marketing and communication or development or, all we, or a gala, which I mentioned is every year in October. So those are good things to um, come and help us with. Great. Well, Mary, thank you very much for being our guest today. I look forward to the mm-hmm. Montcalm Guild's growth in the nursing program. My name is Peter Crowley, and I'll see you next time on Spotlight on Nonprofits.